Hey everyone, I am often asked where I get my ideas and they range from different inspirational pieces. But I'm going to walk you through this one just to kind of show you what my thoughts are. I loved this Santa from the Candy Cane Transfers, which is the new Christmas 2023 release from IOD, Iron Orchid Designs. To me, it looked very vintage. I had this spare paper mache round ball ornament that I had purchased a long time ago from Hobby Lobby. You can tell it's old. It, it, it no longer even has the string that holds it. Now, transfers are a little tricky to apply on a round surface, but stay tuned. I'm going to show you how I did this. The next thing I do when I have a focal piece like the Santa is look through all my papers, rice papers, scrapbook papers, napkins, little bits and pieces, and look at what I see, what I think would coordinate with the style and the coloring. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of going through my stash of things. You will see later on that I end up changing one of the items that I used. I just didn't like the coloring of it. So let's get started.
When applying something flat like a napkin, rice paper, and in this case a transfer to a round surface, I do basically the same thing with the transfer that I do with the papers with one exception. Obviously you cannot tear a transfer. It has to be cut. With the decoupage papers, I tear them because you're, as you're applying it, you're going to have a very slight overlap because of the rounded surface. And when you tear it, the overlap doesn't show as much. You don't have a straight cut. You can't do that with transfers. You have to make a cut. So with a transfer, especially something like this that's a head uh, and kind of close up, I'm very careful about where I trim. And I apply the center first straight down so that I'm not going to have any cuts right through the center. And you can see here that I kind of start at the bottom, make my trim, then I apply that section. Then I carefully cut away the transfer sheet in that little section just to get it out of the way. The reason I start at the bottom is because I want that overlap to come from the, the top down. It will be less noticeable the seam there will be less noticeable. So I go all the way around very slowly, very carefully, picking where I'm going to make my cuts. Stretching that out. Rub on the transfer. Trim that little top piece off transfer sheet and continue on. You're going to have some wrinkles, but in this case it is a vintage looking ornament. I am going to be using a classic crackle over the whole piece. So the few little wrinkles that I have both in the transfer and you'll see also in the decoupage paper and I will be tearing that to fit the curves. They won't be as noticeable They'll just look like they're intentional because it is a vintage, quote, old looking ornament.
dreams this Christmas I've made my wish upon that star The only dream of which my list consists is To always be wherever Here there will be no praying for the snow to fall It would not make a difference to me at all No, I'm not wasting any dreams This Christmas I've made my wish and it came Sometimes things just don't work out as planned, and I change things. Now, normally when you decoupage, you paint the background with a light color. I didn't in this case because I wanted the colors to be rather muted because they would match better with this Santa. So that is a more muted color, and so is that. Well. The picture that I chose to put on the back, I liked the picture very much, but I don't know. I just didn't like the tone of color. So while it was still damp, I removed it. And I'm going to use something different and do some new trim. Now, what I'm going to use is actually that napkin that I looked at at the beginning of the video but it's a lot lighter in tone than, than this. So, however, when you're using a napkin, you have to peel the, the plies off. There are three plies here. I'd already peeled them back. But when you put this on here, by the time you decoupage it on, some of that brown's gonna come through. It might not go too dark. I was gonna, I was going to paint this, just this little section, but honestly, I think it'll look better not to do that. So we're gonna go with it the way I have it, just on top of the brown. When it's Christmas time, I light up a fire. 
gather friends and family Have a bite to eat and some Christmas sweets Chilling out and watch TV Wrapping up the gifts with my fingertips Making up some fancy rhymes oh, so fancy. Just got something fun for my special one But my love don't cost a dime Waiting for Santa to come He'll be knocking on my door Treat the old and the young I hear sleigh bells in the snow Holding on to a bunch of reindeer He'll be making his rounds Working harder for every year When the Christmas spirit's all over town I'm not one of them, the three wisest men But I got an open heart If you feel alone, just stop by my home I don't care about who you are If you make the trip, have a little sip Talking about the good old times How they did it then, back in Bethlehem When the legend came to life I'm waiting for Santa to come He'll be knocking on my door Treat the old and the young I hear sleigh bells in the snow Holding on to a bunch of reindeer He'll be making his rounds Working harder for every year When the Christmas spirit's all over the town With my fingertips Making up some fancy rhymes oh, So fancy Just got something fun for my special one But my love don't cost a dime Waiting for Santa to come He'll be knocking on my door Treat the old and the young I hear sleigh bells in the snow Holding on to a bunch of Normally on ornaments, I prefer to use Pintart's two-component fine line crackle, but on this one, I am using their classic crackle for a couple of reasons. The papers are so muted that I didn't want the fine line crackle to really show up a whole lot. I wanted it to be rather faint, and I will zoom in um, here in a minute to show you what it looks like it's it's very very subtle and the second reason is that I did not want this ornament shiny and with fine line two component you have to use a solvent based sealer now I could have taken it outside I guess and sprayed it with a matte finish but the only solvent based sealer I have is also by Pintart and it's a gloss with the classic you don't have to use a sealer so just like with the other two part components you put on component one you let it completely dry on its own I do not use a dryer or heat gun with component one it doesn't take that long for it to dry after it is dry then you put on component two and at that point you can use heat to get more crackles. I usually let it sit for a few minutes and then I use my heat gun and from there you just finish with the waxes, pigments, whatever you want to use to get your finished crackle finish. <laughs> 